Get him. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a better size one. You're catching the bigger ones. Look at you. I catch these little tiny ones. I only like to catch the big ones, Rich. This time of the year is the time of the year where the snappers are spawning and they congregate, and it's a good time of the year to get out there and catch them. So there's a guide right out of Hawks K here, Captain Brandon Simmons, and he runs the end of the blue boat. A weird fight, huh, Brandon? So whatever this is, is taking us offshore. We're on 80 now. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. What's up, Rich? What's up, guys? What's happening? You ready to go get him? How you I'm doing, ready. Brandon? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. What's up, man? We got, How you uh, we got a little bit of sandball mix. What are we going to do with that? We're going to mix this up with some uh, chum here and get a nice, good peanut buttery mix going. And once we get out there on the reef, we'll make a little sand balls and throw them down there, see if we can't get these big yellowtails coming up. We've been catching some muttons out there too. That's why I like to use the sand balls, get that bait you know, down to them and get them fired up, see right. if we can't, can't get them swarming. So nice. you want to mix it up now? Yeah. Um, you told me the snapper spawn's going on right now. Oh yeah, spawning, big ones. Yellowtails or mangroves or what? Yellowtails. Yellowtails have been spawning. Most of the stuff's been out there, you know doing their thing. So Brent, how are you finding these uh, fish? We've got some spots out there, but for the most part, you get out there on the edge of the reef and you, you, know, you drive around and you use your machines down there and uh, you'll mark them. You'll mark a big old cloud. You'll be running over, see the rocks on the bottom and then out of nowhere, it's like, boom, a whole nice. lot of fish down there. And those can be uh, the mangroves, yellowtails. Mostly the yellowtails or... up high that you're gonna mark first. Um, you'll mark the muttons down there and stuff and the mangroves, a lot of those are gonna be you know, quick marks coming up off the bottom, but uh, the yellowtail is a big cloud basically on your machine. So when these snappers are spawning, you got predators too, right? Oh yeah, there's been quite a few sharks, other groupers looking up at them, waiting for their chance to snatch an easy meal. This time of the year, the mutton spawn, the mangrove spawn is the time of the year where the snappers are spawning and they congregate and it's a good time of the year to get out there and catch them. So I kind of thought, yeah, let's try that. There's a guide right out of Hawks K here, Captain Brandon Simmons, and he runs the end of the blue boat and he had an open day. So we went out with him and uh, he's a great guy to spend the day with. Really, really had a good time with him. He's on the fish. I mean, yeah, man. It was really a cool opportunity, to, you know, just to, to go out there. We were once fish for dinner, and we were, uh, you know, looking just to have a, a good experience and, and uh, get to know Brand a little bit more, and didn't disappoint. I'm running a boat here out of Hawks K. Actually, the end of the blue boat. It's a 26 yellow fin, and we pretty much fish for just about everything from the reef to the backcountry to tarpon to offshore mahi and tunas. So I'm fishing here seven days a week and loving every minute of it. The snapper bite's been going on right now. They've been spawning out there on the reef, um, about 50 foot to 100 foot of water. Rich and Tom came out and wanted to go out and get us some snappers for dinner. So uh, we went out there and targeted our yellowtail snapper. We've got some mutton snappers, um, groupers on the bottom. So we're gonna go out there and, and see what we can put together. We get out there and he's marking some stuff and anchor up, come right back. He's like, yep, that's right where I want to be. And the bottom machines just it lit, lit up. up. Yeah, it did. I mean, that was, you don't know what it is, but there was a lot of them. I mean, that bottom machine was lit up. And, uh, you know, he said he'd been out the day before and, you know, caught mangroves good. One day he caught the yellowtails good. One day he caught the muttons good. So, you know, we really weren't sure what we were going to get into. And the, the first drift back there, which is always fun with that flat line, and, you know, you're, you got no weight. You're just drifting it back with the current, you know, paying out line. Um, you know, just to match the speed of the current. And then all of a sudden that line starts shooting out real fast. You know, you got to fish and close the bale. Um, and, and all of a sudden, you know, we get them on, fight them up, and it was a nice yellowtail snapper. Ah! Hello. Who strikes first? How far were you back there? Pretty far. Yeah, I laid one out there pretty far, and I thought I'd try a little closer. 
after what you told me. You got me a yellowtail. For the yellowtail snappers, you can, you know, you can catch them all over the reef. As long as there's structure, you can catch them on the patches in the shallow waters from 20 foot to 30 foot. We've been fishing lately from that 50 foot to 60 foot. It's been a real good reef spot. You know, a lot of hard bottom, big coral heads, and just a lot of life there. You know, it's it's one of those places that holds life and. You know, those are the, the spots that you want to look for while you're out there fishing. Oh, that's a decent sized fish there. Oh, Tom's got one. <laughs> that was way back there. Going in the box, boys. In the box. Well, the great news is those are awesome eating. I don't know what this is, but. Another yellowtail. Very nice. non fighting yellowtail. That one barely fought. What do you think? He big enough or let him? I mean, that's right. 14, 15 inch, right? Yeah, that would In cost you $25 at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see if we can catch some bigger ones. That's a mutton all the way. Good work. All right. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa, Marathon, Power Pole, and Reflex Boat Decking. Wow, good current. We're set up here about 60 feet of water, right? Got the chum going. It was an interesting day. It was blowing, uh, you know, pretty decent out of the west and, uh, you know, fairly choppy, you know, but that 26 did good. We got out there, took our time. Uh, got set up on the anchor, and um, you know he's letting that chum work. Yeah, a lot of times when you get to a spot and you start chumming, the fish will just rush right in there. Nobody that I know that's really good at offshore fishing likes to just run in there, drop out the chum, and start fishing immediately. Like, it seems like everybody I know that's really good at that is like, let's get here, and there's no reason to fish for a while, we're going to rig our tackle, we're gonna let them start eating, we're gonna let them get really comfortable, and then, you know, after like sitting there on the anchor for 30 minutes or more, now it's time to start fishing. Get him, there you go. There you go. There you go, that's a better size one. You're catching the bigger ones. Look at you, I catch these little tiny ones. I only like to catch the big ones, Rich. <laughs> when you get out there, you know, you wanna be looking at your bottom machine and you wanna be checking out um, what's, what's going on down there on the bottom. You know, especially if you've been fishing there for, you know, a few weeks or a few days or so, you know, you always wanna make sure that, you know, stuff's still going on. Cause sometimes you'll show up and the spot's been really good, but there just might not be anything there anymore. They've, they've moved off or they might've moved deeper or a little bit shallower. So you wanna drive around and really make sure you, you mark your big cloud of fish and, and you'll mark them. You'll mark some stuff on the bottom, but what you're looking for for those yellowtails is really, it, it does, it looks like a big cloud that'll, you know, just pop up on your machine. And that's what you wanna find. When you find that, you know the fish are there and it's, it's worth setting up, getting your chum going and, you know, creating a good spot. Yellow tail, slightly bigger than the last one. Well, they are just coming right in. It's a good one there. One of the things we were doing out there with Captain Brandon was using uh, the sand balls, which is an interesting technique. It's uh, you know a little messy, but can be very effective and get the fish going. And, and you know, basically brought a five-gallon bucket full of sand. We let a, a block of chum thaw out the night before. That morning, we just mixed it together so that it's all kind of a peanut buttery consistency. And then uh, when we're out there on the reef, in addition to the just frozen block of chum in the chum bag, periodically we're throwing these sand balls out and allowing that chum to go down to the bottom. And I, and I think that helps to bring some of these snappers, the mangroves and muttons and things up towards the surface. There he is. That's on that whole valley hoop. Uh, looks like the right one. That ought to be something good. Might be. You know, if you wanted to capitalize on the yellowtail, we could have kept doing that as much as we wanted to. And then uh, we kind of decided, you know what? Maybe we'll try a jig head. Yeah, right? I know. While you guys were catching those yellowtails, just to try something different, I took a, a jig head on a little heavier rod, had about 50 pound leader, and, um, and, and about a one ounce jig head, 
and I just took a ballyhoo, a dead ballyhoo, put him on there and kind of deboned him so he'd, he'd swim a little on the current and had a little scent and just threw it back there, let it kind of strategically sink down. And it did not take long, man. Bam, you know, nice fish on. And uh, this one ended up being a really nice mangrove snapper. Yes, sir, a nice mangrove. Look at that. Right on. That's <laughs> the right size cool. right there. The whole ballyhoo, man. Tom, I, I stole your old jig head trick. There you go. Hard to beat the jig head. And that's kind of what I was the most excited about were those big mangroves. So I went to a jig head right away. We catch a couple more, and Brandon's like, I'm going to something down on the bottom too. So now we've proven that the flat line works really well, and we've all abandoned it. <laughs> we caught plenty of yellowtail and nice ones, and now it was like, okay, let's see what's on the bottom. Let's see where what's what's going on. And we're looking, you know, Brandon was definitely looking for the mutton. I was looking for the mangrove. I think you were probably like whatever whatever bites, you know, like you normally are. That's a fish right there, boy. Good mangrove. Yeah, look at that one. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be going to the jig head here. That's yeah. my favorite. That's a fatty. That's a good one right there. So that's what you're talking about, the spawn. Look at that belly on him. And then Brandon, you know, he, he does like your typical keys rig where there's a, you know, like usually the leader comes down, put a weight on, some kind of swivel, then a leader down to the hook so that you can free spool the line out through the slip sinker. Well, we had run out of swivels, so he had to kind of rig up something. So he, I, I noticed what he did. He put a lead on there, then he went back through and kind of tied like a uni knot around that. So then the hook was down there and he had like a six foot leader. You know, good enough. If you run out of tackle, you always got to figure out how you how you make do with what you have, and he did a good job there, and sure enough, he started getting a couple of muttons here and there. Yeah, man. All right, boss, call your shot there. I think what I got, got the right one. It's definitely acting like it. I think this might be the right that's species. That's the right one. Sure enough, man, he finally got one. It was just this race, you know, and that's kind of the fun part about that, that light tackle is, you know, all right, I got him off the bottom. Now I got to get him up fast, you know, and beat the predators in, and he finally got up this nice mutton. You know, we measured him, and it was a keeper, um, not not one of the big whoppers that we'd probably had hooked, but uh, but certainly a keeper, and, you know, you know that really was cool because we had all three snappers, you know, kind of a snapper slam. The yellowtail, the mangrove, and the mutton. Come on, Brandon. Let's see what you got. A lot of times you get out there and, you know, you got to change things up. You might have to use a bear hook. That way your bait is floating higher on the surface and getting to those fish back there. Or sometimes they're way down and the cloud is maybe 20, 30 foot down on the bottom and you got to use a little bit of a, a weighted hook, which has you know, a jig head or something like that. That way it gets down a little faster, that current's not keeping it up, and, and you can get down to those fish. That's a mutton all the way. Nice mutton yeah. snapper. Good work. Right. That's a keeper. That's a good one. I can tell you what, when they pull like that at that size, uh -huh. the 25-pounder. So we like to target the snappers. Everybody likes to target the snappers because it's just so good on the dinner plate. You know, there's nothing like that, you know, dinner with your big whole fried snapper on there. It's just, it's a delicacy, especially down here in the Florida Keys. You know, people know about it, they love it, they want to get down here and they, you know, they want to try it out and it's, it's worth it. It's one of my favorite fish to eat. There you go, Brandon, stick with it. It's good, we've gotten all three different ones now, yellowtails, mangroves, and mud. After this one, I may be going, oh, got eaten. Felt him, the death rattle. Somebody bigger back there. Anytime you're doing this kind of fishing, the sharks and the other predators are aware of that. There's a lot of activity out there. And so anytime you're yellowtailing, man, you gotta fight those fish as fast as you possibly can. I mean, if you let them kinda, you know, do their thing, they're getting eaten. Rich is on. Brandon, we got some action, baby. There's oh, the one. Oh, there he is. Oh, he got eaten. He just totally got eaten. That was Goliath? him. I mean, no just... Goliath goes that fast. That's a black grouper I, I, or a I, I, shark. I, no, I had a fish on. I know. And it, it totally got eaten. So it's like a race back to the boat. You know, whatever kind of tackle you're using, you are fighting those fish as fast as you possibly can to the boat, or you're going to lose them. And we started to lose some. Come on, come on, show me something. He's coming. Uh oh. Uh-oh. 
We're gonna find out what stole your fish and what stole mine is gonna have a belly full of hooks. Brandon hooks up, definitely something that started as a snapper of some sort. And uh, you know, he's like, oh boy. Sure feels like it's got like 100 pounds to it. This might be the capper. I had one like that. It seemed exactly like that, like a big Goliath grouper. But maybe it's just a big black grouper. This fish just starts slow like a train, man, just slowly going away. We're like, okay, well, you know, if it's shark, usually it would probably break you off by now. You know, that is the kind of the coolest part about reef fishing is, is such a variety. You never know, man. You don't know. It's a saltwater fish. So then we went into panic mode and figured we had to dump that anchor oh, yeah. and chase him as fast as he could because he was running out of line rapidly. There's no question about it. I mean, we had to either break him, we were going to break him off or we are going to have to get off the anchor. Go catch up. At least he's making him work a little here. Bluefin tuna, baby. Bluefin tuna. And, you know, now we've got, you know, 10 minutes invested in this fish. We've left our anchor. So it's like, well, let's see what it is because, you know, we start having these, these uh, conversations. It's like, well, what else? Could it be? This is a weird fight, huh, Brandon? Weird fight. A group or a mutton or something would have gotten us in the bottom. You think a shark would have cut us off? That's what you think. I mean, with the small hook I got and the lines either. So whatever this is, it's taking us offshore. We're on 80 now. Megalodon. Megalodon. It's been said a million times, but that's kind of the fun of this. You never know, man. Even if you come out here every day, see something different. One of the secrets for us to find these snappers on the reef is really our sonar. You can have great numbers and have a spot that, that worked yesterday or somebody give you some good numbers, but when you get out there, that does not mean that the main body of fish is always going to be right there. Whether you're trying to find a new spot or you're just going out to an existing spot, it's a great idea to have your sonar on and just idle around and try to mark these fish. This Lowrance 16 live unit has a great, easy to use sonar. All I really do is, is uh, put it on auto. Um, I put it on split screen so where one side is zoomed in a little bit more than the other. And then we just idle up and down the reef and that 50 foot to 80 foot range is usually a really sweet spot where those snappers are hanging out, especially during the spawning time and we will mark those fish. When, when I see a great cloud of fish, I'll mark it on my GPS, actually mark the spot. And when you find these good marks, just go up tight them a little bit, drop that anchor down that same depth of water, and that current flow should take that chum right back to them, whether you're sandballing or just regular chum, they're gonna respond to that and come to you. So uh, really the big key to find these schools of fish is their sonar, spend the time. Uh, don't just go out and drop anchor anywhere. Somebody tells you, spend the time to look around. So the unit we're using today is the Lowrance HDS Live unit. It's a 16 inch, it has a super easy to use sonar. It's very accurate, great detail, I really trust it. If you wanna check out this exact unit, you can go to Tackle Direct and check out the link below. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. Waypoint, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. And by Bruno and Rod Holders. Nikon. Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Golden Boat Lifts. It's hard for me to believe Saltwater Experience has been on for 17 years, and you can find every show for free on Waypoint TV. Go to waypointtv.com and download the app. Slow and steady, man. That thing is. Just easing away. How about a tiger shark? That would be super cool. Catch a tiger shark on a size one hook, that'd be sweet. <laughs> the first for everything. 25 pound leader and a size one hook. A bonefish rod. It could be a ray, a mermaid, a turtle. And we all started recounting all these stories that we had, we had had of weird things that had been hooked before. And so now at this point, we got almost an hour invested in this fish. And it's showing some signs of coming up. A couple times it so planed, like, planed out to where, um, you know, the line kept coming up, up, yeah. up, 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 and I started, I'm like, we're going to see it, we're going to see it, we're going to yeah. see it. 
So we all want to see what it is, but I'm also very curious to see how it's hooked. Me too. You're making progress, man. Yeah. I'm proud of your patience. It's hard to be that patient, man. I wasn't. I wasn't always this patient. <laughs> There's all sorts of things when you get, you know, your snapper eaten by a predator fish that could happen. You know, you're thinking, oh, it's a shark. He's gonna cut us off. Or you know, okay, we haven't got cut off yet. It can't be a shark. Or we've got them hooked perfectly. Maybe it's a goliath grouper or, you know, something else really big down there. And uh, there were so many instances when we thought we were right there and we were going to get a glance at whatever this mystery fish was and he just didn't want to be seen, didn't want to be known. Did it do something? Yeah. Look at that. Planed out. Look at that. What's going on? Oh, oh. oh no way. Oh. No way. No oh. way. No way! Is that it? That's it! No way! No, no! One big just about to show us. After all that, that's it? That's how this is gonna go away? So I'm like, you gotta show me that leader. I'm walking right up there for the, the deal for any kind of clue that to what that, that, that... Yeah, that would have yeah, been you're evident. gonna get some kind of clue to what this is. Look how much line you had out, man. That, that thing never came off the bottom. Never. The oh. hook broke. Oh! The hook broke. No, it did. Are you kidding it me? It did break. After and all there that. Is not, there is not a scrape on this leader, hardly. So that tells me it wasn't a shark, because if it was, even if it was hooked in the pectoral, mm -hmm. it would be scraped all the way oh, up for through sure. here. Wow. Sandpaper? I'm going to say that's a goliath. Yeah, how It was it? hooked like on the outside of the mouth or something, oh. and then the hook broke. How crazy is that? You hung with it, man. The good news was we had a box full of snapper, more than we could possibly eat. And, uh, you know, we're coming back to Hawks Cay and, uh, you know, we flam up and uh, had an incredible dinner for many days with, uh, you know, great snapper. It was a good time. I enjoyed Brandon, too. You know you're with the right guide when you're like, I'm pretty sure this guy likes fishing more than me. Nice well, thanks, Brandon. Time. That was a great day, man. No problem. Lay up some of those uh, snappers and have a great meal. Let's go clean them up and get some dinner.